let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about greenhouse gases, in particular, carbon dioxide. Now, when I talk about greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide, most people think I'm talking about climate change and what's happening there. And that's not what I'm talking about, but in a way it is, because it's just a smaller scale of the same thing. What most people actually don't realize is as we increase carbon dioxide to our atmosphere, the plants are going to grow better. Okay, sure, it's going to heat up, and a lot of areas that, you know, were arable are now going to be burnt out because they're going to be too hot. But where I live, it's going to get better, because <laughs> I'm in Manitoba and we're further north. That being said, what we're talking about today is adding CO2 or carbon dioxide to a greenhouse so that your plants grow better. And what we're going to go over is how we can add CO2, how we can measure the amount of CO2, and what the sweet spot is to add CO2 to your greenhouse so that you're not adding too much or too little. You want to add pretty much within a certain range so that you'll get the optimum plant growth. So that's what we're here for. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And in this channel, we talk about greenhouses and gardens and growing. So if you want more information than just CO2, like this video on how to make your plants grow better, check out our archives. A lot of people are gonna beg you to subscribe, saying, oh yeah, we got new stuff coming out. And sure, we do have new stuff coming out, but our archives are extensive on a multitude of topics that will help you grow better. So if you get a chance, hit subscribe and check out the archives. And if you like it, hit like, because when you hit like, it tells the YouTube algorithm, these are the kind of videos that you like, so it'll serve you up more videos like this in the suggested side on the right or in your homepage. And not just for me, but from other creators too. So if you hit like, you're telling YouTube, don't send me more Kardashian crap. Send me stuff that's interesting, like this. As humans, of course, we need to process oxygen, but plants process carbon dioxide. I'm not going to get into the full scientific idea of how they process and photosynthesis and everything like that. Needless to say, it's pretty much a fact that the more carbon dioxide up to a particular point you add to your greenhouse, the better your plants are going to grow. And that sweet spot, although it varies based upon the temperature that you have in your greenhouse, tends to be around 1,000 parts per million. Now, in warmer areas, it can get up to 12 or 1,300 parts per million um, when you're pushing 80, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Notice from my American friends, I used Fahrenheit there and not Celsius because I've been getting a lot of complaints about that, and there's a lot of Americans watching this channel. Um, that being said, carbon dioxide makes your plants grow better, substantially better. And if you're going to add carbon dioxide to your greenhouse, you want to know how much to add. So looking at these charts, it gives you an idea that if you're, you're running in the 70 degrees Fahrenheit range, you're going to need around 1,000 parts per million. But if you're hot, you're 85, 90 degrees, you're going to need a little more, 20, 25% more. When I say you're going to need 1,000 parts per million or, you know, 1,200, depending on your temperature and where you're located, how do you find that out? Well, guess what? You can actually go to eBay or Amazon or Alibaba and you can get a test meter. And believe it or not, these test meters are not that expensive. They're actually relatively affordable. And you can monitor and even track what the CO2 levels are in your greenhouse. So if you're going to be adding CO2, and this is a trick that's used by almost all of the large commercial greenhouses now. This is why when you go to the grocery store, you're going to find a pepper and a tomato that's actually quite big compared to what you often can grow in your own greenhouse. Well, what's the main difference? The difference is they're adding CO2. And they don't add too much. They don't add too little. They have a meter and a sensor that will keep them right spot on. So they're within 10% of what the suggested amount of CO2 from the charts. And you can look up the charts for your specific vegetables and see which ones like what so that they're getting the right amounts but we don't call this a magic grow gas for nothing. So one of the questions I hear is, what's gonna happen if we put too much CO2 in this greenhouse? Am I gonna pass out? Is it gonna kill me? I mean, you see in the movies, people turn their cars on in the garage and it knocks them out and you know they don't survive. But that's not CO2, that's carbon monoxide, not carbon dioxide. But 
the thing is carbon dioxide can kill you too if the concentrations are too high. The thing is the ways that a lot of these places produce the carbon dioxide isn't really a main concern. One of the nice things about carbon dioxide is that it drops. It's heavier than air. It's heavier. Most of the air we breathe is oxygen, but it's 70 or 80% nitrogen and it's lighter than carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide will fall down and as long as you've got your CO2 meter, I mean, you can take a few gulps of carbon dioxide and it's not going to kill you. It'll be fine. It's a prolonged breathing of it may cause you to pass out. So if you've got a carbon dioxide meter and you're within a thousand parts per million, there's no issue whatsoever for your health in that, in your greenhouse working away. I mean, if you started running 10,000 parts per meter, well, maybe we got an issue, but your meter will tell you that, which is going to tell you you might get a little sleepy, you know, after be working in there for a while. But if you check your meter when you go in, when you're adding carbon dioxide, there's not going to be a problem. You're going to say, oh, it's too much. Fan. Turn the fan on. Exhaust a bunch of it. You got regular air in there. Suddenly your parts per million are down to where it needs to be. The other thing is you got to watch your parts per million for your plants. They don't like too much as well. There's a sweet spot for growing. So once again, how much is too much? Well, it's going to depend on your temperature. It's going to depend upon... Uh, humidity a little bit but not so much but it's also going to depend upon what plants you're growing to so what carbon dioxide generator or method of adding it to the greenhouse are you going to use i'm aware of three main methods the first one is a carbon dioxide generator and what these are is basically they're a propane or a natural gas burner and they create carbon dioxide now a side effect is they will generate a little bit of heat as well but they're their focus is to create carbon dioxide for your plants to consume. Um, Alibaba, eBay, Amazon sell multitude of different types of carbon dioxide generators that work with LP gas. LP gas just being propane. And you can usually substitute propane for natural gas if you have a natural gas line where you live because natural gas delivered by line is exponentially cheaper than bringing propane in in most circumstances and most areas but that of course is limited to whether or not you have a natural gas line to where you live and a lot of people in rural areas that are growing greenhouses don't have natural gas so that's one type of generator another one is actually just buying tanks of carbon dioxide there's multiple places fire supply stores greenhouse stores uh, even some welding supply shops will sell CO2 tanks. And you can put a regulator on that that will release the CO2 at specific levels um, over the cost of course of the day and provide CO2 to your plants. And I mean, if you adjust the valve after watching your CO2 gauge meter or the meter that tells you what your parts per million is, within a very short period of time, you can actually figure out and get the CO2 in your greenhouse to very close to the proper levels to grow your plants and suddenly you're going to start getting bigger tomatoes and bigger peppers and bigger cucumbers and they're going to grow faster now my favorite method of producing co2 is actually making wine making wine and beer the fermentation process will produce a large amount of co2 and it'll produce enough that it can you know it get very close to the levels that you're going to need. Now, there are other sugar yeast packages you can buy on eBay and Amazon that will do the same thing, but it doesn't give you the booze. So if you're going to do this and you got a greenhouse, in my opinion, you want to make the booze too. Even if you don't drink, this is something you can sell. This is something you can give away for gifts at Christmas to people that do drink or, you know, there's enough people out there that will appreciate getting good wine or beer that, it's something that is worth considering if it'll also make your plants grow better. So, I mean, if you have a greenhouse and you're making wine or you're making beer in your basement, you need to seriously think about where you're doing that because suddenly if you start making that same wine and beer in your greenhouse, you're going to grow better. And if you have the ability to somewhat temperature control that fermentation process and that's done pretty easily with a little heating pad that you can buy for the five gallon containers that most people make wine and beer in this is something that uh, takes you to the next level and suddenly if you're competing with your neighbors on who's got the best tomatoes you're going to have bigger tomatoes you're going to have tastier tomatoes and they're going to grow faster and better
So that's it. The magic grow gas is CO2. It's carbon dioxide. It's something that if you add to your greenhouse, you're going to grow more. Um, if you get a chance and you want to look at other tricks on how to grow better or how to build greenhouses or how to keep heat in or heat your greenhouse for very affordable methods, check out our archives. Our archives are extensive on all things greenhouses. Hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day.